Hey there, Internet. So the other day I had the opportunity to go out to Anderson's Bookshop in Naperville, Illinois because they were hosting a stop on the Fierce Reads tour. It was a really fun time and I shot some footage because I know before I went to my first author book signing event extravaganza sort of thing last year, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know what the people would be like. I just had no idea what I was walking into. So I decided to bring my camera along and show you all what a typical sort of Anderson's event is like. So take it away, me, from last week. Hello, Internet! So I am in Naperville, Illinois right now, and I'm on my way to an author signing at Anderson's Bookshop. If you've never been there and you live in the Chicagoland area, you're missing out! You should do it, because it's an excellent life choice. So I'm here with my friend Lynn, <laughs> and we just had fun book time talking over dinner. Say hi! Writing. Hello! Hello! So who are we seeing today? We are seeing Anna Banks and um, three other fabulous authors that as fabulous as they are, not as fabulous as Anna, because she wrote Of Poseidon, which features Galen, which is swoon, like YA heartthrob of the year. <laughs> Love him. Yes, it's going to be fun time, so we are going to go in now and wait for all the action to begin, and uh, there's going to be links to all the other authors we're seeing in the thing down below, so it's going to be great! Okay. So Monument 14 sort of you know, I couldn't help myself. I walked through Target. I'm a mom. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. And when you have small children, you actually spend a really lot of time at Target. <laughs> um, and so I, I cased the joint. I just knew where everything was, and I couldn't help myself but imagine, you know, if I had to live here, what would it be like? But So I'm always running scenarios. In fact, my favorite game with an ex-boyfriend of mine, which might reveal why he's an ex, <laughs> is that we would say, okay, you know, it's the world, like we have six hours uh, to get to safety. What are we gonna bring? <laughs> and then we could just plan. Like my big thing was, you know, we'd say the, the basics, right? Tarps, um, grains, seeds, medical supplies, contact lenses. Um, and my big thing was always a salt lake. Right? Because you get a salt lake up in the woods and then the deer come to lick the salt and you kill the deer and eat <laughs> But M is not so sure. She hates seafood, she doesn't have the dark sirena coloring, she's Canadian tourist white for crying out loud. <laughs> sure, she can hold her breath for hours, but even if she can't sprout a fin, what then? Does he expect her to give up everything she cares about? Her mother, college scholarship, strawberry cheesecake? To go live in a seashell off the Jersey she seashore? <laughs> anyway, the answer is no freaking way. As for my writing process, I wake up at 4.30 in the morning and have, um, a little coffee and my cream and I start to write and in the evenings I'll have some wine and I'll write some more in the evenings and sometimes sometimes I write a lot and sometimes you know it's like I call you know people call it writer's block I call it writer's constipation <laughs> because you know sometimes only a little comes out <laughs> I belong to a cult myself, the cult of Stephen King, and I do whatever he tells me to do. Um, so when I read on writing, I did exactly what he told me to do. Uh, I started writing, you know, I was at the beginning of my I'm going to write novels, period. Started right after college, and I was like, I've always been saying I'm going to do this, so i got to do it now. Um, so I wrote, I just started writing 2,000 words a day, no matter what. Um, and I was very, very consistent, but I kind of found, I found out along the way that 2,000 words a day might not be the best idea for me because I have about a thousand good and another thousand terrible. So I would get off track really easily. It wasn't until a little bit later on uh, when I tried uh, screenwriting that I learned how to outline a little bit and how to you know come up with a high concept idea instead of putting every idea I had into, into my novels. Um, my first two novels were every idea I had, you know, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of other people's ideas, too, <laughs> which, you know, don't tell Joss even that. <laughs> I tricked myself into writing this book. Um, I, I wanted to be a writer my whole life, but um, I never really managed to finish anything. Unlike Jen, I was sort of the opposite of Jen. Like, I didn't write 800, but I, I wrote two chapters of, like, a very deep literary <laughs> novel, very profound. And um, uh, 
there were two chapters sitting in my desk for a very long time because there was this critic in my head who was always like, that's terrible. Every word has to be perfect. So this time when the critic kicked in and started telling me that, I was, instead of fighting it, I just kind of agreed with the critic. I was like, <coughs> you're right, it's awful. Good thing no one's ever going to see it. You know, like I would just, you know, every day I would, I would hear that and I would just keep working and, and plunging through. Um, and that was sort of the trick I played every time I sat down to face the page. Because you just don't want a bad day to turn into a bad week or a bad month. Um, you don't want to scare yourself away from it or spend a half hour just staring at the same sentence and just, you know, feeling that yourself frees up. So, um, so that first draft is not something I would ever show anybody, but it has questions in it like, you know, why does this happen? You know, or comments like, I love when I come across something that's like, make this make sense, or this <laughs> character is awful, or, you know, insert awesome scene here. But <laughs> that said, when I go back to it, there's a beginning and a middle and an end, and that gives me confidence to go back and rewrite. After that, the authors took questions from the crowd, and it was time for the signing line, where all of us got the chance to talk to Emmy, Anna, Jen, and Lee one-on-one. -on -one. And that was my Fierce Reads experience. So that's it for me for now, Internet. Take care. Bye-bye. So I'm actually here right now with my friend, Erin. No, your name is not Erin. I'm thinking her... Ah, let's do that again.